started out about a month and a half ago. I got a, a call from a good buddy of mine, William Avila. Um, he told me about uh, two grand nationals, uh, consecutive VIN numbers, never been owned, uh, under a thousand miles on both. One of them has uh, 834 miles. The second one had 592 miles, which is behind me here. Uh, VIN, you know, VIN number consecutive VINs is still going to have the uh, window stickers still displayed in the windows. Uh, so if you don't like those, you can take those off as well. That's what the, the buyer had put in his, in his advertisement. Um, wanted asking 200 grand. I thought it uh, was too good to be true. I thought it was one of those old uh, Craigslist spam uh, sites you always see. And, uh, you know, I didn't really think much of it. Then the next day, uh, I got home from a long day's work. I sit down to, and uh, had a drink and just decided I'd shoot a, uh, this guy a text. I was told that he wasn't responding to anybody. So long story short, I send a text and about the time I'm sitting my phone down, uh, I get a ring back on my phone, I pick it up, the guy responded. And uh, he actually said, you know, that, that, that these are true uh, 1986 Grand Nationals. Um, it's, it's a real deal and he was gonna send me some pictures the next day. Well, I never heard from him the next day, so I didn't think of anything about it, you know. And that uh, following day at work, I ended up getting eight pictures uh, come across my phone. And it was eight pictures of two Buick Grand Nationals. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is the holy grail, the holy find. And at that point, I text Will back. I was like, man, you ain't gonna believe it. I sent him all the pics. He got all excited, I got all excited. I was like, we gotta plan a, a trip to go see him. Well, uh, once I found the location, it was out in the western skies of uh, Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle. It took us about three and a half hours to drive up there. I set a date on Sunday. We drove up there, got up there about 4.30, met the guy. He rolled open a uh, double car garage door and there set two Buick Grand Nationals, never registered, open MSOs, odometer statements, dealer invoices. Window sticker still up with about three inches of dust, as you can see, uh, on the vehicles with some cat prints and, and everything that comes with uh, two vehicles sitting for 30 years. I asked the guy if I could, uh, you know, look them over and, and have William look them over. He's my Buick guy. He, he knows these cars like the back of his hand. And uh, upon me walking up to the window, I looked at the, you know, the VIN and I looked at the window stickers and I kind of wiped some dust off uh, where the sticker was at. And to my surprise, it wasn't 1986 Grand Nationals, it was two 1987 Grand Nationals, the last year for the production. Upon finding that, I had to contain myself and I kind of let William know and we're both in, in, you know, in our emotions, you know, uh, is playing a huge role in this. So me and the guy uh, kind of hash out, uh, you know, some figures and so forth, just to kind of fill him out while William's looking over the vehicles. And later on, about an hour later, uh, you know, I told him, well, I needed to mold this over. I needed to kind of think on some things. And we went back into the city and uh, I couldn't believe it. I was definitely excited. And uh, I kind of just stayed in contact with the guy for uh, the next four weeks. And uh, I need a, we need to agree on something uh, by Friday. And so he's like, all right, let's get a game plan together. We agree on a number. I drove up there uh, with Paul Mesmer and William Avila, good buddies of mine once again, upon arriving at the location. He was kind of hesitant uh, because that prior day, he told me uh, you know, the dollar amount he wanted on each cashier's check, so that's what I did. And pulling up there with the cashier's checks, he got real wishy-washy saying, you know, that he had heard some fakes, some uh, fake cashier checks going around. So I assured him they wouldn't, but I understand I'm, you know, he don't know me and I don't know him. So we go to his bank and, uh, you know, agree, you know, go to the bank, let's, let's handle that at the bank the proper way. And after about an hour and a half, uh, I ended up just wiring the money instead. That way everybody was on the same page. Got back in the car headed back to his house, loaded him up, and got out of town. Uh, came back, you know, had to open MSO, Buick Grand Nationals. 
I went ahead and uh, went through the legal system, got the titles in my name as, uh, as I'm the original owner of both the Buick Grand Nationals now. Did a lot of research uh, about the vehicles before I even put my hands on them. I let them set for about a week to get a game plan. Reached out, uh, called a lot of restoration, a lot of detail companies um, out there from east to west coast. It didn't matter if I was driving to Chicago, if I was driving to Kentucky or California. I wanted the best of the best. And uh, got a lot of feedback, interviewed a lot, a lot of companies for the job. And just so happened uh, I got a referral uh, from uh, somebody local and uh, about Brian and the auto spa. And I came down on a Friday and interviewed him. And he said exactly what I was wanting to hear. Everybody kind of was telling me how their processes are. And their processes were as you was dealing with a 2000s model or a brand new car. Um, you know, when you're dealing with a 60s, 70s, 80s model vehicle, it's a lot different. Uh, the paint, everything's different. It's a, just a different process. And nobody had mentioned that process of what I was wanting to hear. And that's some of the first words that came out of Brian's mouth, so I knew he was the guy for the job. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see, uh, you know, uh, after he puts his magic on them, uh, how they, you know, they're, they're gonna be brought back to life. I mean, they're, uh, they, need, they need a lot of love, but he's the guy to do the job, and I'm excited. Came in here to the auto spa on Saturday, November 25th, to pick up the vehicles, the twins, two 1987 Buick Grand Nationals, consecutive VIN numbers, and I'm definitely stoked, man. I couldn't be happier with what Brian Menke and the team did over here at the auto spa. I'm excited. Uh, we're fixing to finish up the Hot Rod Magazine shoot. We're taking them down to Thunder Valley right now. They're going to shoot those for the upcoming magazine. Uh, keep your eye out. You're going to see them around town. I'm excited. Stoked.